Hey, in this video I'm going to show my personal workflow to create a work cycle in place. This is just how I'm used to work and uh, I found this method pretty easy. Uh, I will use the lava rig. I customize it a bit. Uh, I want to do a female work cycle, so I exaggerate a bit with the hip and the tiny waist uh, and the size of the breast. I usually start from the feet and the hip. Uh, and then I go forward up to the head, so I have this button-up approach. What I do at this moment is to hide the parts of the body that I'm not going to animate now. Uh, so I just want to focus on the lower part of the character. So I go to hide everything above the hip. In this case, the head with the, the eyes and the ears are uh, separate from the body, so I just select the, um, the geometry and I create a layer that I will go to height. So I turn off the visibility of this layer. I open the eyebrow shade. On the eyebrow shade I create a new material, um, just a Lambert. Uh, then I put uh, the transparency on this material. Then I select all the, all the faces that I want to hide and assign this new material. Okay, so all the upper part of the body is high, now I can focus on the lower part. Another thing that I usually do is to assign two different colors to the legs. In this way I visually have an instant difference between left and right uh, and it's more easy for me because I go to animate one leg at a time. Uh, so uh, these two colors help me to be more focused uh, just on one leg, on the ones that I need to watch. At this point I decide the length of the cycle. I usually use around 31 frames for this kind of walk. So let's set the, the timeline, 31. And so now I can start to set the main poses, the keyframe poses for the blocking. At frame one, we start with the contact pose with the right leg leading. So uh, I move the right leg uh, forward in front of the body. Um, it's a contact pose, so the heel have to touch the ground. So I rotate the foot in this way, and okay, so the left foot is behind, so it's bended a bit. Uh, it still touches the ground, so uh, that the body is well balanced, but uh, not completely. I mean, it's a little bit bended. All right, another things that I have to do, uh, I move in the front view because uh, she's a female, she's a girl. So uh, when she walks, I imagine that she keep the feet pretty close to each other. So I move internally, the, uh, I translate the, the foot more close to each other, just pulls one foot and then I copy the value of the X on the other foot. So now that I uh, set the pose for uh, the contact pose of the feet and the cog, I go to copy this keyframe in the last frame. So I go at frame 31 and I pass this keyframe. So this is where the loops will start. At frame 16 we'll still have the contact pose, but we need to mirror the feet position. So I just copy the pose of the left foot on the right foot and so on. Then I go to set uh, just the curve on Z of the feet in linear. This is very important, uh, especially for the part where the feet touch the ground. And for the moment, I keep all the other curves in spline. At frame three, we go to put the down pose, the recall pose. Uh, this is the pose where the body reached the lowest position. So we move down the hip. This is the moment where uh, we feel the weight of the character. In this case, it's a slim girl, so she's not very heavy. Uh, I just move a bit the body, not too low. Uh, just, I don't want a huge up and down for her. The leading leg now touched completely the ground. Um, so I adjust the rotation and the leg behind, it's really close to leave the ground. It touches just with the toes. Let's move forward to the passing pose. Uh, I usually create two key poses for the passing pose. 
uh, one close to the down position and the other one uh, more close to the contact pose. So I start with the second one because this is the moment where the hip or the card have the highest position and for the left foot that now is the leading one I copy the position of the pose at frame 16. At this point I want a little pause uh, in the movement. So I reduce the spacing in the passing movement that will start fast and go slowing down. Okay, so I've done the uh, passing pose at frame uh, 12. Uh, now let's add another keyframe at frame 8 for the first passing pose. This is the moment where the feet are close to each other, more or less at the same position uh, in the middle of the hip, in the middle of the point of gravity of the body. Uh, keep attention to the position of the feet because if you do wrong this pose, you lose the balance of the walk. So it's very important to keep attention to this pose and well balance the, the fit position. Uh, okay, so we have all the key poses. Uh, let's mirror in the other half of the walk. So now I uh, set uh, the tangents for all the controls in step mode. Um, let's make a playlist of the blocking of the feet and the cog. The timing is okay, uh, the feet works pretty well. Uh, now I want to add the hip movement. Uh, this part of the body will help me to do a very feminine, sinuous and sexy movement. So I exaggerate with the rotation. Uh, the hip will rotate in the opposite direction of the leading foot. Uh, I will also add the translation left and right. Um, the hip uh, have always to be translated on the foot where we have the gravity. So when this leg is in the air, uh, I translate the hip on the other foot that touch the ground. So in this way you get to balance the walks so that the characters don't fall. So uh, to have a sort of sassy uh, and accentuate uh, left and right movement of the hip, we have to uh, play with the spacing. Uh, I got to slow down the rotation and translation up to uh, the contact pose uh, when the leading foot touches the ground. And then in the down position, I'm going to increase the spacing in order to have a, a fast change of position of the hip, the change of weight on this feet. So here we have the key poses and blocking for the hip. Let's make a quick play bust. Okay, I'm fine with that. So uh, at this point, uh, the lower part of the body is done in blocking at least. Uh, this is the most difficult part of the walk cycle. Uh, the timing, a good movement of feet and a good up and down makes the 70% of a good walk cycle. If your rig have some deformers for legs and arms, use them really. Uh, they really help you to adjust the shapes and the arcs. Um, I'm usually pretty sad when I don't have this kind of, of control in a rig because it's really useful uh, so if you have it just use them. Uh, now I go to refine this part. Uh, I could continue with the blocking of the rest of the body but for time reason and also because uh, I have clear in mind how it has to look like I'm okay with just the blocking of the lower part and I can go uh, directly animate the rest in spline. Let's convert the animated tangents in spline, except for the Z tangents of the feet that are switched to linear, at least for the part when the feet touch the ground. Uh, the back and forth movement of the feet have always to be in linear to avoid a sliding feet result. Uh, now that I have all the tangents in spline, I go to add a cycle uh, to the curves uh, to loop the animations and I cycle uh, and past. So I go to uh, switch on the infinity visualization and let's adjust all the tangents to create a more fluid movement as possible. Um, keep attention to the first and the last keys where the cycle starts. Uh, with the handles we go to adjust the curve to reach a fluent movement. If you don't do that you will have a sort of glitch in this part. 
Let's see how it works. How it works this lower part in spline. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. It's sexy enough. I like the butt movement. Uh, I'm particularly satisfied with that. Now let's animate the chest. Uh, I want to add a squash of the chest. So what I'm going to do is to add an up and down of these three controls. The only one that have translation is the upper part of the chest. So uh, I translate this one. So I create the squash with just this control. Uh, I will also add a rotation of the chest in an opposite direction of compared to the hip movement. So when the hip is rotated on the left, I rotate the chest on the right and so on. Uh, I have these three controls that I will move together. Uh, and then I go to offset all the curves except the curve of the leading control. In this case, the lower control is the leading. So um, I select the second one and I offset the curves of let's say three frames uh, and then I go to do the same with the third control the upper part of the chest I select the key and I move them uh, in the timeline of forward of six frame this time okay so all the curves of the these three controls uh, are offset and so we have the same movement but in different time. So let's refine the curves. And let's see the play bust. Okay, there's a visible squash. I like it. And I think that the different rotation uh, between the chest and the hip makes the walks more curvy and sinuous enough. So uh, yeah, let's move forward. Uh, now the arms. So the basic rules is that the arms moves uh, in opposite direction compared to the leg on the same side. So when left leg is in front, left arm is back and so on. Uh, I will work on an arm at times. So uh, let's start with the right arm. Uh, I don't want a huge back and forth movement. Uh, I want something elegant, something feminine. So uh, I will keep the upper part of the arm close to, to close to the body and I will add a movement for the lower part that go more on left and right that back and forth so we'll have this kind of movement that it's more feminine because usually the, the big movement of the arms uh, back and forth is uh, more uh, specific for a, a man walk uh, of course it depends uh, everybody have different walks but yeah, as I said, I want to do this walk so uh, very, very feminine. Uh, I translate the shoulder a bit. Yeah, just to add some movement in the shoulder, I will not move them a lot. And then I go to the fingers. I pose the fingers and I animate them with, uh, still with an offset. I moved so in this way I move all the fingers together and then I just add an offset uh, between them and now I get to refine the animation in the graph editor so let's see the results uh, okay it's not a classic arm movement for walk but I like it I think it's in the style of the walk so I'm okay with the right arm movement, so I mirror the animation on the left arm. Okay, so we have the body animation. Let's add the head. For the head, I will just add a small rotation. I don't need a huge movement for the head. I mean, during the walk, the character should be focused on keep balance and look where she is going. So I will try to keep the head and the look in position balancing and offsetting the head compared to the chest movement. This rig don't have honey controls for the hair. You know, I like little details. So I just quickly animate the mesh and the vertex, add some movement to the locks. Last but not least, uh, especially for this character, I go to animate the brace. As for the hip, I want to exaggerate. I'm going to add 
a circular motion and an up and down. I exaggerate with the sight, so I have to exaggerate with the movement too. Uh, I mean, this kind of breast should be pretty heavy, so an accentuate up and down is really needed. Uh, okay, this is the result and I really, really like it. Uh, it's perfect for this kind of walk. It's perfect for the walk I had in mind. It's sexy and squishy enough. So now the walk is done. If you have a rig with other details like clothes or props, animate them. These little things really helps uh, for the sense of weight and to make the walks, uh, you know, more fluid and interesting to see. Uh, I hope you liked the video and I also hope to help be more clear as possible. Walk cycle are not easy, so the only things to do is practice. Uh, I think I will create another video for a run cycle, so see ya! Yeah.